I believe the potential for the kingdom of God through electronic media, that potential has expanded exponentially. There's more opportunity now than there's ever been. We're seeing an era when people are starting to say, you know, the issues facing me uh, go deeper than the surface. They, they're, they're spiritual issues. And a lot of times these guys aren't going to go to church. <laughs> you know, we say, hey, well, come on to church with me. Well, they're not going to go. Uh, but why not the radio? Literally, we have a world that is perishing for the lack of the message of Jesus Christ. And we are here to help facilitate that message. And we want to be able to speak to our culture with compelling programming that will attract listeners and uh, substantive content that will transform lives. If anybody wants to know what NRB is, it's a group of men and women committed to using electronic media, using every electronic media platform available to us to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I would have to tell you that probably of all the organizations that I've been related to, NRB has done more for me as an individual and more for the ministry, Precept Ministries International, than any other organization. What's great about NRB is the function that we play and the role that we play that is really unique within the whole body of Christ. Now we have an organization where we can come together and discuss ideas and be a part of a family to share what's going on out there. If you've never been to the NRB National Convention, you don't know what you're missing. It is an amazing event where we have people from all over the world coming together, thousands and thousands of people coming together. It's embodiment of the body of Christ that we see at the convention. And it's a time for an encouragement, it's a time for challenges. Um, and uh, all around, when most people come, they just have a lot of fun. I graduated with a degree in radio and television, but going to school is one thing, but actually starting to work in the industry is something else, and so I didn't know anybody. So the first convention I went to, I was like, wow, look at all these people. There's so many people here, and people I'd heard on the radio and seen on television. I, I was just so excited. You get energized by looking at people and seeing the faithfulness that they, with which they do their work and seeing the hand of God's blessing on them. And it just reminds you that God's working in your life too, and God's working in your ministry too. In the 30 years that I've been involved with NRB, I've seen us go from um, all U.S. people to people coming from other nations, and now there's a big group of people. I was a Spanish-speaking broadcaster, and there were not many of us at that time, but the NRB was the place where we all get together. We got together, and we exchange information, exchange ideas, and help to grow each other. Here in North America, we climb this incredibly steep learning curve to get where we are today. And in many respects, there are a lot of Christian broadcasters around the world that are still climbing that very steep learning curve. One of our, one of our goals is to help them shorten that. I mean, they're amazing in their, in their hunger to learn, and uh, they bring a refreshing spirit because in their country, they may be the only Christian radio. A lot of times people have thought NRB is just a convention. Year-round, there are events and activities going on and the influence of NRB on Capitol Hill. It is highly advantageous for us to be able to continue to fight for and help protect uh, the access of Christian ministries involved in electronic media to the channels of communication. You know, we just don't want to broadcast a broadcast. We want to be able to broadcast the gospel. And so we want to be on the forefront of making sure that the airwaves are free and clear. We will not let the gospel be hindered. This is a land of liberty. America is a land of freedoms, and we need to protect the freedom of our airways so that we can continue to share that good news. You're basically finding the situation where the NRB's Government Affairs Office is our voice in Washington on the issues affecting broadcasting, and it's the entire range of broadcasting that's impacted. So the fact is that uh, without the NRB, I think we have a very, very difficult time. A good friend of mine who spent 15 years on Capitol Hill one time said to me that politics is really downstream from culture. So the political culture follows the secular culture, and the secular culture is more and more constraining uh, religious expression. One of the things that I think we could accomplish through Christian broadcasting, through NRB, is to saturate new markets to find new ways of penetrating the secular market with the Christian message. There are channels of distribution everywhere. No longer uh, do you have to have a radio television station to 
uh, distribute a broadcast product. I was the other day in Hong Kong and they were telling me, uh, you know what, Andres, I'm listening to your broadcast from my iPod here in Hong Kong. So, we, you know, because we podcast. You know, NRB uh, over the last couple of years has uh, introduced some things such as a REACH conference, which is designed to, uh, to really have interest for those who are mostly younger, but they're dealing with graphic arts and visual arts. So we're trying to kind of bridge the gap between the bubble of Christian communication and the greater culture. It's the next generation. I think we need to expose them, we need to train them, we need to mentor them, we need to disciple them. These young people are thinking creatively, thinking about reaching their generation, and I really appreciate that NRB for many years has made that a focal point. The NRB, because of our unique capabilities of addressing the technological issues, the regulatory issues, are going to make sure that these platforms are available for young communicators that want to communicate a message of hope. NRB has the opportunity as an organization to be a mouthpiece for the gospel, for the church, for Christians worldwide to say there is an answer to what's you know, the hunger of your heart. NRB helps turn up the amplification on uh, the message of the good news of Jesus to a really hurting world that needs it. We need to be out there boldly standing with, with for our members and with our members because the gospel needs to go forward. We all agree that Christ must be glorified, that his kingdom must come. We come together for a lot of reasons. But we stayed together these, these 60 plus years as an association because we are men and women of vision who see that maybe for the first time, because of the technology available to us today, we can say this may be the generation in which we reach the entire world for Christ.